The global footwear market is expected to reach $543.9 billion by 2030. This fast-growing market is fueled by consumers looking for the right fit. Hi, my name is Alden Betterly, and for my senior project, I built myself a custom pair of running shoes. Ever since I was little, I've been fascinated about the great outdoors. I've always been a runner, a hiker, biker, anything. Um, and this has really helped fuel my passion for uh, running specifically, but just outdoors in general. Um, it wasn't until high school or middle school that I got into competitive running and collecting shoes. Um, last year, junior year, I started working at Runner's Alley. Um, it's a small running store in Concord. Um, and that's really where I learned everything I wanted to learn about shoes. This is where I also learned how unique everyone's footwear needs are. Because everybody has a different kind of comfort. Let me explain. Uh, I'm going to give you two examples of customers I've worked with in the past year um, and just kind of how Runner's Alley benefited them. First, uh, a woman came in. She's from an island off the coast of Massachusetts. Um, and she is a trail runner. So she comes in off the island twice a year and makes a point to visit our store because she knows she's going to get a comfy shoe and she also knows she's going to consistently get a shoe that works for her. My second example is a man who, who came into the store the other day, uh, a couple weeks ago, for uh, the first time ever. Um, and he worked in the medical field. So in the medical field, you're on a lot of hard surfaces and you're going to want a shoe with some extra cushion. He came in looking for the exact same shoe that everybody else um, in his workplace was using. He put it on his foot and it just wasn't the right fit. So we got him fit up with something that worked much better um, and he left in a happy mood with something super, super comfortable. But why am I saying this? Well, the two most important attributes of uh, getting a customized running shoe are comfort and consistency. Why you may ask? Let me explain. Comfort is important because if a shoe is not comfortable, it's not the right fit. It's not giving you what you need. And consistency is important because if you don't have the consistency of wearing the right shoe, you can get pain, injury, and lead to all other, uh, uh, leads to all other sorts of problems. And that leads me into my research. Uh, for my research, I researched and uh, I looked into how the right fitting shoe can improve everybody's quality of living. And I found four main reasons why people's life can get improved by shoes. Number one, a carbon plated or racing oriented shoe can help professional athletes increase their speed and efficiency. Number two, a wider shoe with more volume can help promote better blood flow and overall better foot health. Three, a stiff, wide, and stable shoe can help correct instability, specifically for elderly folks and people with disabilities. And four, a high cushion shoe can help aid with recovery and help prevent injury, aches, pain, stuff like that. But for my research, or for what I was going to use in my shoe, I concentrated on two main points. A, a high cushion shoe, and B, a shoe with a wider toe box. I chose higher cushion because I run a lot, I do long runs, I do races, and I always tend to be sore. So a higher cushion shoe is going to help relieve some of the pain and pressure off my feet. And a wider toe box. A lot of my shoes, including my racing flats, are very tight on my feet, and I sometimes find I have problems with my toes coming together and I get bruised toes and stuff like that. So I wanted to promote a nice wide splay on my foot and promote better foot health. So I used these two attributes to figure out what kind of shoes I wanted to test. So I tested shoes to figure out which ones I liked, which ones I didn't like, and then used that information to figure out what kind of materials I wanted to use for my shoes. So tested them out. Uh, I ran in 11 different pairs of shoes, as you can see up there. Went on a bunch of different types of runs, road, trail, all that kind of stuff. And I took all that information and put it into a table. I went on my computer and hours and hours did research on every single one of these shoes, figuring out what materials each one of them used. I took all that information and put it in a big table. I then used this table and decided what materials I wanted to use and which ones would be the best. I took all these materials, 
went online, researched the price, researched the amount of each material I would need, and created a budget. Once I got my budget done, I got all my materials ordered, they showed up, and I got right to work. I started my building process by making a template of the entire shoe. This template guided me throughout the outsole, midsole, and upper. It gave me all my parameters, and including the holes in the middle, which would take some weight off my shoe and also provide some extra grip. I continued working with the outsole. Uh, continued working with yeah, the outsole. I took my big piece of carbon rubber, cut out the pattern, and it was done. Moved on to my midsole after that. So my midsole building um, was made by slowly layering pieces of EVA foam on top of each other. This created that high cushion feel I was looking for and also created a slight drop. Drop means from your heel to your toe, your foot's on more of an angle. Um, and with that angle, um, it helps take the load naturally off of your calves, your Achilles, and the back of your legs. So another important aspect of my shoe. I then continued uh, with heat treating. So I took my foam, and because of its different properties while under heat, um, I was able to create a durable outer core while maintaining the elastic um, feeling on the inside of the foam. It also helps bond each piece of foam together. I then, uh, I then continued um, with my upper. The upper was the hardest part for me because instead of making it all in one piece, I had to make it in different modul modular pieces and put them together. I was really confused about where to start, so I started by deconstructing an old pair of my shoes. I took the upper, I cut it up, and I figured out what pieces need to go where, and that really helped me. I was then able to hand sew everything I had together and then hand sew those modular pieces into one big upper and then attach it to my midsole. And I produced my final product. Yes, I know, it may not look the best, but it's very comfy for me and very practical. I did have some setbacks with my build though. Like I said uh, a little bit earlier, um, I had a couple problems with some of uh, attaching the modular pieces together, some structural imperfections that I had to patch up with some rubber, with some foam. And my biggest problem was material sourcing. I would find tons of materials that were super expensive, super high quality, or very inexpensive and very low quality. Nothing really in the middle. It wasn't until I did, I'd say at least five hours of research, that I finally found high quality materials for more of a medium price. And once I was done the building process, I popped my shoes on, I was walking around in them, and I realized how unique they were to me. They were perfect, but only my kind of perfect. You see, everyone's footwear needs are specific to them, but not everyone customizes their footwear to their needs. And this applies to more than just shoes. In our lives, it's a commonality to compromise comfort and practicality for looks. It's important to choose the more comfortable and more practical option to maintain a happy and healthy lifestyle. Because sometimes choosing the stylish version can compromise our health. And who knows, sometimes it is the most stylish option that ends up being the most comfy or more, most practical. So I ask all of you, next time you are buying a shoe or any other product, Ask yourself, is this the right one for me? Because everybody has a different definition of the word comfort. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, what's up? What's your favorite thing to have, like, favorite cushion to have in your shoe? My favorite cushion? Uh, I like a mixed EVA blend because it provides a good springy feel during racing, but it's also good for recovery. Any other questions? Yes? So you're those I have not run. I'm a little bit scared to run in them. They're really <laughs> comfortable, but like I don't, I'm in season right now, and I was in season for cross country a little bit. I walked around in them a bunch, and they're comfortable. Like I enjoy putting them on my feet. They just don't look good either, so, but that's okay. That was part, that was part of the project, you yeah? know? All right, any other questions? What's up, Colin? Hi, Alan. 
<laughs> would you ever uh, think about opening your own shoe store where you like customize shoes for people? Yeah, if I could get better at building them, maybe. <laughs> What's up? Uh, if you were to redo it, what would you change? Oh, uh, if I would redo that, I would create a last. Um, and I would create um, a full 3D model, probably out of probably 3D print something, um, figure that out, and then design it off of that. And I would use some different, uh, probably get some more, do some more research and get some more materials that are geared to um, durability and getting a shoe that will work well outside and stuff like that. Any other questions? What's up, Colin? How much did all the materials cost you? It was on my sledgehill. Okay. Was it like 97 <laughs> Yeah. Oh, $92.66. How does that compare to other... Most shoes right now, the average for a quality running shoe is between the 140 160 mark. And if you're looking for a high quality or specialty shoe, 180 And most racing shoes are upwards of 250 So, pretty good. Like I said, more mid-range. I didn't want to spend a fortune on this, but I found some good quality materials. Anything else? Cool.